So let's call me. Was there a clock over there before? Six oh four on the Miami Six oh four. Okay. Call the meeting to order. Motion. Accept the minutes from December 4th. Make a motion. A second. All in favor? Okay. Um, financial statements? So financial statements I sent out to you um, last week and then today I had a request to um, resend the final FY17. For some reason, not all the funds were there, and I did not realize that. Um, and when I looked at the template, I must have unchecked the other funds to use it for an end of the year report. So I rechecked them, and I sent those out to you tonight. So you should have those. Thank you. Um, you do have um, five warrants to sign tonight, and they total thirty-nine thousand eight fifty-six and sixty-one cents. I'm signed so um, there's um, last time we, we met I had brought to your attention some variances that we had uh, mainly uh, we had to add the uh, we had to add uh, um, some time for ESL teacher which affected our um, our budget and that mr. Christopher Foley had um, traded in Traded in, had uh, two vacancies for uh, IA, so he had uh, replaced that with a teacher. Uh, and then we had talked about um, a student that was going to Wings, and he, that student was in Wings, and now a second student has also, uh, this past week, gone from our school to Wings. Both these students are school choice, so we will get this money back. But as you know, we spend our money a year in arrears. So when we look at the budget tonight, it, um, I, want, I want to really bring your attention to we are no longer spending our budget a year in arrears. We're spending like a year and a half. And you guys, um, you're going to have to make a hard decision because um, I tried to move things off of school choice onto our budget, but now we've got a 3.6% increase, and I don't think the town's going to like that. So. Um, we're going to have to make some hard decisions when we get to that point. Uh, but I did want to let you know that that second student did end up going uh, out of district. But that's not really driving the, the problem, the, the student. Because no. you're saying we're going to get that money back. back. That's a timing it's a, it's a timing issue. But the issue you're talking about is a broader issue. Yes. Okay. So that's all I have for the financial report, unless anybody has any questions. Um, well, on that note, with the school choice fund, mm -hmm. with the financial report, it's showing a negative balance with the encumbrances. Correct. So, is, how does that connect to what you were talking about just now? So that is because when we budgeted our teacher specialist, we had only budgeted 0.2 of, um, of, of a Spanish teacher, but now they're at a 0.4 doing 0.2 ESL and point to Spanish. Okay. So that's why it's over that 13,309 on that first line. And then see the second line, the special ed teacher, there was a difference of $673 between what we had budgeted for the two IAs and what her salary is. Uh, I believe she's a, a step four master's degree. So I'm sorry, I didn't see the 13,000. No, it's, it's on page five, it's yeah. the first line that says teacher five. specialist. And if you go over to the right where it says budget balance, it's 13,309,010,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,113,
Um, Does it have something to do with bringing in another teacher board, and, which is less than the two aides? No, that, okay. so that should still say 673, and now these are off. So what could be happening is that I have the, I do the encumbrances, and Stephen may have posted, um, a jam, uh, posted an extra salary in there, and that's why it looks like it's short one, one paycheck. So the encumbrance on that is incorrect. So that needs to be corrected. Because it should say it's a, at a negative thirteen thousand. Let me just instead of ninety seven hundred. Right? Correct. Okay. I don't know why that's doing that. This is why I don't like them having to manually encumber mm -hmm. because it's very difficult. And if he po and if someone it doesn't automatically adjust. Like no, if you because pay them the right amount. It, if we paid, if we used our system to pay them, Katie, it would do exactly that. Oh, so like our frontier system. one, but we prep the payroll, the gross payroll, and we send it to the town, and they do the processing of it. So that's why we have to manually encumber. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we post what we send to the town. And then I have a huge spreadsheet that I use, I post those spreadsheets, and then I'm projecting to the end of the year what's, what's left. left. Mm -hmm. And you do that every month. Right, and then I reverse the entry, and then I make a new entry. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, are we gonna, how much, how much do you think we're gonna be over on this so i guess can i maybe walk through my understanding that sure. bottom line there where it says 228 2800 has been spent on tuition to mass schools is that the wings yes that would be the, the that and last projecting that that's going to be another 16 for the year another so it, it's going to be uh it should be another 16 because it'll be a partial year and then but we'll get that so we'll be over by 19 on that line but we'll get that money back We'll get that money back this fiscal year, this fiscal year in June. So that we get it back from we we'll get it from the other town. But that will cover the average of essentially. Correct. But there's nothing left. Right. Yeah. What can I ask this? If I guess my other my question would be, I'm not sure if I can answer ask this or not. You say if the kids in fourth grade and he's going to wings so he's school choice into us for another two years after this year if he's in fourth grade mm -hmm. so wouldn't it be better for the town that he's school choice out of to take care of him versus the money going through our hands well is we, that a good, is that have, a good we, question we, yes it is <laughs> we don't have the right to send them back okay they might choose to they I might mean, choose if they if if if, if, if let's say um, the district could choose to take them or right or place or them where they want. If, if the parent them, went and looked at the program that we that we yeah, for that. I, it would be at Deerfield. If we propose a program at Deerfield, Conway, or Sunderland, depending on the child's disability, and they don't like that program, they, don't they will more than likely go back to their home district and have them do a, a placement as well. Right. And they have that right to do that. Would it would it be benef beneficial if if the programs will say is in Deerfield, which I, that's where it is, but if, if it's in Deerfield, wouldn't it be better for them to school choice in the Deerfield if the pro if the program's in Deerfield? We can't do that. Okay. And, it, and, <laughs> and believe you me, we are, we are driving Desi crazy with this because we have this problem so we have we now have school choice kids from Waitley who are school choicing who we are tuitioning into Conway we have school choice children in Deerfield who we are tuitioning out to Sunderland and we are driving Desi crazy with the reporting and they're getting it wrong and we have to keep calling them saying because they're giving the money to Sunderland when it really should go back to Deerfield because Deerfield paying tuition to Sunderland so it, it is a nightmare. Okay. We are a regional district. It, it wouldn't problem. happen. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Any other questions on your financials? Anything, Pete, on your end? Nope. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I see 
just something small. I, it, like I said, I underlined everything that had a negative. Mm -hmm. I see Nature's Classroom was an extra hundred dollars this year, and we only we only have six hundred in for stipends. So is that should that be something that we should put at seven hundred in our budget so we don't run into this problem next year, or was that hundred dollars? Whatever the reason, we discussed a couple of things about Nature's Classroom that we're going to fix in the next budget. Okay. So you mean this coming budget? Yeah, I can't. I don't know exactly why it's that way, but there's two funds for Nature's Classroom. One is a revolving fund where parents pay in, you know, pay and yep. money goes in there, and then one is a fund for stipends. I think primarily for kids. this one says stipends, probably yeah. for the teachers. So those stipends went up um, last year, and I think we accounted for that last year, but. Um, it used to be an overnight stipend, but I think people got paid a daily stipend. And I think what, what also happened this time was that we did not have a male chaperone, and we had to add an extra Almost chaperone we because we needed a male chaperone for the boys. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we were short. So I don't like to over budget, so I'm hoping next year that we won't have to add a, 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 a separate, a separate yeah. that someone will volunteer and get paid. Rather than us having to add a chaperone. That's I know sometimes things get sh shuffled here, but I just want to make sure that we don't have like you know it's, it, like the instructional materials was four hundred dollars. We're up fifty percent, so we had to spend an extra two hundred one dollars. Is this something that's like a a one time, or or did we take it out of the wrong line item to make it? I know I'm only talking about a few dollars, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. if if a line item needs to be put up because materials prices and stuff go up. So the, so what we do now, as opposed to before Patty was here, I think that in our previous business manager moved money around quite like our okay. business manager. Yeah. But when we overspend, that's our cue at this time of year to look at that and say, is that a one-time deal? Did we just, did we overspend because we had a big expenditure we didn't expect? So do we leave the budget line item the same for next year or do we increase it? Those are the conversations I'm having. Yeah. Right. And I think it's actually a really good practice to do that. Like, it's never going to be perfect, right? So you, you want to do the best budgeting you can, and then you want to use this information to really understand what and hap what actually happened during the year. The way I look at it is we're over in the in the nature's classroom stipends, but we're under in the nature's classroom expenditures by five fifty. So technically, we're still four fifty up, right? So as long as that bottom line is still is still good, positive, I'm good. Generally, we're in good shape, right? Yeah. And, and there are times what will happen, um, Bob, um, we will order something and then they will add that the, the, the delivery cost doesn't, it could be $3.86 more than what we had anticipated, what we got quoted. Okay. And, and that's why we're off like $4 in this account. And it's hard to know like a year and a half ahead of like when you spend some money. I just want to make sure that we are, I mean, I know we want to try to keep the budget down, but. Uh, if, if, like you said here, if we've only spent X amount of dollars in the other one for nature's classroom, maybe we take, if we need an extra 100 or two, we'll take it out of this one and put it up to 800 here, this one will be only 1,200 on the other things, other instructionals for nature's classroom, which is 14, where we still have like 550 to, 550 to spend, which we're not gonna spend this year because we're not doing nothing else for nature's classroom this year because it's in the fall, right? So, right. And this is early childhood, where this um, extra is 200, where we're short um, instructional materials. That's Page three. Yeah. The third the one you're talking about. Yeah, the 50, yeah, the yeah. 201 dollars. That's early childhood, and that, for a variety of reasons, could have gone up just simply because we went from half day to full day. Um, so it could, for a variety of But reasons. for materials, I mean, that's great because how many people we have there, that's something I'd rather put another two or three hundred dollars in the materials because we do have that many more people plus it's full time. I mean, 
You I know it's easy for me to say put a few hundred dollars more, but well, if you recall, you guys gave us permission to spend this a couple more bucks because we were starting it up and we needed some seed money to buy cots and things like that. So we, you had given us permission at the end of last year when uh, Ms. McCarthy came and told you we wanted to go full day. You had given us permission to overspend those lines so that we could get up the startup materials. If you think that's enough for next year, that's fine. But if it, if you look Our back, pro the yeah. program is running very. Yes, that's good. That's all I had, I think. Right? You went over a couple of them that I had, so. But the EC fund, we, we, don't, we only see the expenses. We don't see the, month, the tuition that's coming in to cover the Correct. Expenses. So we're only looking at expenses. And we I can change that if you'd like to see uh, the revenue posted. But it's only going to be monthly. Like, I've just... We most of the smaller funds weren't in infinite visions. So only the general fund was in when I came. Only the general fund was in infinite visions. And I have been asking the people to put the smaller funds in. They were running them out of Excel spreadsheets. And that's when you, if you look at some of the warrants, you can see like the one that's right on top there, Maureen. That does that's Excel. They they did that in Excel. But like the big one with the clip on it, you, that came out of Infinite Vision. So you can see the difference. So I have been trying to encourage them to put all the funds into Infinite Visions so that we can get the, all our reports to look like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can we can start adding the revenues. And we just I just started teaching them how to put in, if at the beginning of the year, uh, Kim McCarthy says, I think we're gonna budget this for revenue. We put that in the budget number, and then we see, then we see how they do. Exactly. Yeah. So they're just learning how to put the revenue numbers in, and we can add that, Katie. We can add that so you can see the where we are with the revenue projection yeah. between what we collect and what what we what we thought we would. I mean, it would be nice if that was self-sustaining. I don't know if that's possible. But right now, it it, it, it is, um, yes. and we'll t again that it, we're going to talk about that when we start looking at the budget. Okay. Okay, so let's move um, on then to the public comment. <laughs> you have any comments? Anybody? Hey, Anyone? Hi. Good. Okay, no public comments. They're always welcome. Um, unfinished business. So update on capital improvements. That was helpful. Brian Domina sent an email. I don't know if everybody saw it. I'm looking at you because I'm not sure if you saw it or Patty. I didn't. That was helpful. He sent around what he had sent to the town offices, and I think to Lynn, about, about the, the regular budget, and then included oh. some information about the capital budget. Well, what we thought, what he sent around was the, um, the latest on the um, fire suppression. And yes, yeah, and it included the latest on the fire suppression. So, um, and he, he actually, um, did a really great job of a synopsis. So an internal inspection was done this summer. It revealed a significant amount of corrosion buildup in the inspected piece of the pipe. Under the fire code, this triggers the need for more thorough internal inspection. A tested, uh, testing of random selective sprinkler heads did not pass the required pressure testing. Under the fire code, this triggers the need to replace all the sprinkler heads in the building. A committee consisting of John Hanna, Fire Chief, James Cerrone, Building Inspector Bob Lesko, uh, Facilities, uh, Pete Christofoli, Principal, and myself have met with several companies to explore the best path forward. Another meeting will be held this week or next week to determine the best path forward. Friday this week. Friday this week. Uh, maybe Thursday, but it's this week. We just scheduled it. Um, the previously scheduled meeting was canceled due to the weather last week. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't have an estimate on what the total co uh, project cost will be. The internal scoping of the system will likely be between 3000 and 4000 of which town funds are available to pay for. It is fairly certain that the internal testing will need to take place during the February break, uh, with the actual repairs occurring during the summer months when the children are not in school. So that's the latest. So this meeting on Friday, hopefully you'll have some good notes for the following meeting. Um, the um, between the three and four thousand is that just for the testing? Yeah, for the yeah. just for the scope. Yeah. Camera. Um, so 
there's a couple of things that might happen. They could scope it and then maybe try to uh, put you know, water pressure through it and see if that breaks up anything. But I'm not sure what the total cost. Uh, yeah, we don't have a cost on that yet. But the, the reason we're having this other, this other meeting is because, again, doing our due diligence, trying to find the best company and the best price. We, uh, Brian located a company. A gentleman came in, talked to us with a great deal of confidence about um, uh, being able to, with an additive of some kind, really clear out the corrosion from our system. That would also potentially entail finding you know, more leaks because once you push a corrosive, a corrosive clearer through there and move some of the corrosion, we may find more leaks or create more leaks by doing it. Um, and we got, a, we thought, a very confident report that they could do this and do it well. Um, but that was a company that is a different company than the company we normally use for our repairs. Mm -hmm. And so it was agreed at that meeting that we also wanted to give this other company an opportunity to talk to us about what they could do and, 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 and maybe we'll get prices from both. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. I'm pretty sure that's what, what the plan is. So this week we're meeting with a different the other. Uh, provider to see you know, if they feel equally confident and, um, and then we'll take it from there. The town approved the money for the valuation. There's still money. There's still money in the um, the what, what the sprinkler, fund. The sprinkler fund. fund. So right. they're probably using that. But if that that's it, correct. But if but if that if, if there's not enough in there <clears throat> to do the whole project to do the whole project, right. whatever that end whatever the end project is, there's going to need to be money, right. and that is where and um, we're going to talk to Dr. Carey and what Brian Donovan had to say. Is he going to handle that for a capital request right. to the town, or we should you or do our, in, or that's does he want us to put the paperwork in? Yeah, because it was but, due on Friday, last right. Friday, but obviously he knows this is coming. Right. So the big question mark is how much. So last meeting we we talked about the quote for thirty thousand to do the analysis and evaluation. How does that compare to the three to four thousand that he's talking about? I think it's a different company. Is that what the, you don't know? I, I can't be 100% certain, but I think that this, the scoping piece is, is the first step. Is in, part of that. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I think that there, is a, there are several steps. One is um, that they're going to take a look inside the system and, mm -hmm. and scope it to see what, you know, what there is to see. Fun. Then I think that one potential solution is to try to clear the system out. Um, Which, uh, if, excuse me, but I, I believe the original company said that there was nowhere to do that because there were so many uh, shoot offs the from the main we spoke to. pipe. The second people we spoke to felt confident that they could do this, that, they, that it's something they've done. They said it's not that unusual. They actually talked to us about the fact that, oh, yeah, the year this building was built. Um, we, we do a lot of buildings that have problems with that. Exact year. Pipe. That's a bad year. It, yeah, it's a, it's a type of pipe that was just, you know, was being used widely at that point, and it was just not, not the quality. Um, so, so clearing the system is a part of it, but beyond that, if, you know, if there's more repairs to do, plus the sprinkler heads, that's kind of like a third piece. There. Well, I think, and so I'm just trying to establish we have 30,000 So the, the three and four is this new company saying they can do the option for that part. The thirty to forty thousand, I think, was the money getting a um, engineer to come in and evaluate everything right. and tell us what we What's need to do. Next? Right. Okay. Points going to cost. So they're sort of they're connected, but they're not the same. Right. Repair and redesign. Because we may not need the second piece if the second company can come can in and this. blow out all those little lines. And then the big question is, what's the total cost? Right, which we still I mean, don't have. At least by scoping, you're going to be able to see it. I mean, that's that's a uh, that's the best thing about scoping. Maybe identify Stick that thing right down there, and they can watch it on the screen as they check different lengths or different tail ends of everything. So the scoping really does. And I think if the scoping can tell us what is causing the corrosion, that is going to be a big answer to a, a, a yeah, lot of questions yeah. and a lot of solutions going forward. Okay, so you guys will check with Brian to see if we need to put something in or if he needs to put something in. Is that yeah, we can. Yeah, that? after that meeting on Friday, I think um, probably part of your discussion would be uh, who's going to put the money in for the. If they need to do the original, we had thought the original cost of the whole project would be upwards to 100000 Right. Mm -hmm. 
So if, know if you want to just forward me that email and then I will just shoot it off to Brian and say, Brian, did you want us to submit an application for the capital request or? I, I, I just had, I just had to here. I could maybe forward to the one with the three and four thousand. Yeah. Yes, shoot that to me, and then I can just ask Brian who he expects to send in the capital request. Because the, another project that's not on, so I it includes the town list, so you can see all the projects that are on the town list yeah. so far, and sort of when the timing is. So there's only two from the school right now. One is the carpet replacement, and one is the phone and intercom, which has been funded. So the phone one has yes. uh, shown funded from last year. The carpet one shows 15000 for the next few years, but my understanding is that we're trying to cover that through excess operating funding, or that's how we covered it last year. We the were in the summer. We started the project with that. Right. Yep. So, so we're going to hold off this year. And with the sprinkler year. thing, we're probably not going to hold off on the carpet be able to push years. that one right now. Right. I, 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 and our budgets are getting so tight that I, I, I'm not foreseeing that we're going to have funds at the end right. of the year. So we may or may not be able to yeah. do that one. But if we did, we could. It would have to get pretty warm the next two months after this last two weeks. Yeah. If we have if we have temperatures like this, we're going to be burn, burn, we're going to be burning a lot. Yeah, we're going to be burning a lot more of some type of fuel and yeah. Or gas. Yeah. So if I compare the list that we have, the only other there's a paving project that is on here for sort of I don't know how far yeah. away. And I know you've talked about paving before. That's an, is that something we want to try and not. So not maybe for this coming year, but get on the list so that we can start. That, that, that's a hundred. That's a hundred thousand dollars. That was dollars. Easy. I just got a quick ex, um, estimate for paving the elementary road and parking lot for ninety-eight thousand dollars. Okay. And that's um, it looks like forty-nine thousand sixty-five square feet at two dollars a square foot. So Is that something with Keith? Because Keith was mentioning that. He could probably tie it in with the town oh, town right. roads when they do it whenever they do it because and try to get a better price doing here while they're doing some town okay. roads. Because I do believe that Waitley, um, I uh, belong to the Franklin County business managers, and I know the FERCOG does a bid for what do you ever I call asphalt. the asphalt. Thank you, and I believe uh, the town of Waitley and the town of Deerfield participate in that so if we would if Keith if we, they got the funding Keith would probably be in charge of that project and, and do the joint bid for the asphalt with with the fur car probably be the cheapest right yes I, and I, I just want to put in my vote for um, thinking about when we do a project like that um, adding a little more asphalt on the other side of the island where people are parking in the dirt right now should push that skirt back a little bit, and I don't think it would hurt if we thought if we discussed paving the fire road that goes around the building as well. Um, it's a dirt road now; they still they still plow it. Um, it would be a better and safer road, I think, if it was. Paved. Yeah. But if the money's not there, then we can we just repay what we have. And I think that Keith also talked about there wouldn't be a need to uh, tear up what's there now. He would pave over it. Which might mean some curb work, but he still thought that was out better. here or on the fire road. Uh, our current asphalt. Yeah. You know how on the highways they use those machines and they grind it up. <laughs> he, he said we wouldn't probably need to do that. That we would. So we're on. We have the original. The yeah, we have the original. We have the original base and layer out there where when you start adding another layer on top of another layer on top of another layer, that's when they like to try to right. shave it down or whatever they. Right. they but he thinks it was good for the layer. Save some money doing that. So it seems like that project should get on the list at least, even if we, I don't know what the criteria are for how final it has to be, but in anticipation, because they're projecting out five years, so it would be good to maybe say, I don't think next year we need it for next year, but probably we'll start needing it the year after. We're year starting after. to see a few problems. Yeah. I mean, we had a little um, divot that, that happened right next to our septic, septic tank. There I know the man where you go down where the Floods and stuff are. Mm -hmm. Keith came and they, they filled they that, that. You know, it sunk a little bit. We don't know why. Nothing. The good news is, is that that little block. Um, it's a hand block uh, opening underground mm -hmm. that holds our septic floats mm -hmm. and stuff. There was no damage to that, thankfully, because when we started the div developing, we were concerned that there was water and that mm -hmm. it may have damaged that box, if you will. But it didn't. And that's good news. 
And so they put some asphalt in there so it's more easily driven over. It's not a big divot in the road anymore, but I think it's a sign of what's yeah. happening there. Yeah. Anytime you get cracks in asphalt, and moisture gets into your expansion contraction, yeah. and you know if, it, yeah, if it's if it's tilted at all, you know with the ants, the ants start digging down through. There's small little critters. If you look at the top of the ant hills, yeah. it's dirt, so they're pushing the dirt up, which means everything else is sagging. Unless you seal those, unless you seal those cracks, and you know if they're not going to be asphalting for a period of time, it might be worth it. To, have somebody come in and just seal the cracks and keep the moisture from. Yeah, I never knew that ants were a problem. I, I learned something new. Fog is a fog information. <laughs> I, I I have a question. I know it's not part of this that was brought up uh, with Bob Lesko this past week with the heating system. We had a couple crack elbows upstairs during the cold cold weather. Yeah, I have that. On oh, my is that principal's report? Okay, uh, but I can talk about it now. So my understanding is that um, I didn't hear about the elbows, but I thought that we had a valve issue, a frozen valve. Okay. Maybe and it was uh, Conway. It was us and Conway yeah, had process issues too. Yeah. Um, so we did have some heating issues just prior to this and and during the recent cold spell, and uh, they've been repaired. I haven't seen a bill yet, but um, there was the whole administ uh, one of our one of our units, so one of our zones is called the administrative unit. So main office, my office, nurses' office, conference mm -hmm. room, teachers' lounge and hallways are part of that unit, and that unit just was not working mm -hmm. right. So th those were the coldest rooms in the building. The rest of the building was good. Uh, gym, probably too hot in some days, you know. So finding that balance, but, um, so they found a valve that, that was faulty. I don't know if they've uh, temporarily fixed it and are gonna replace it later, because as you know, that company, I think it's Shamrock, whatever, just straight out the past few weeks, I'm sure, with our school and others. So, but right now the heat's, you know, we're back to where it should be. Um, but I haven't seen the invoice yet. I don't know if you have. Uh, Bob, Bob was saying when I saw him the other day, must have been last week, he also said they're gonna put uh, glycol, glycol antifreeze. Yeah, antifreeze. Yeah. They did it already or? It's been done. Okay. Yeah. That way we won't have this problem in the future. Mm -hmm. Plus it'll mm -hmm. help with oh, any it's cold again. Okay. If, <laughs> plus it'll help with the corrosion in, in those pipes oh, too, yeah. with, with the glycol and stuff. It's especially in freeze, but Conway had the same, had probably worse problems. So their whole system and plus our whole system has it in it now where we don't have to worry about the cold weather for, for that part of it. Still have to worry about this in cold weather. If we don't, if we don't drain a particular thing where we did a couple times there where we had a problem, but now I think we drain all the low points, right? I mean, yes, that's right. you don't, that's somebody the, comes in and does it. So. Yeah. We do it all the time faithfully at work as at the lumber company. We've got a lot of them and stuff, so. So that was number one in your principal's report. Okay. You can okay. check that out. I just wanted to ask while we're talking money, yeah. that's all. Yeah. What yeah. about the air conditioning in the closet? Is that done? Uh, the no. PO's written. The PO's okay. written. Don't, <laughs> don't we need that? <laughs> well, it, it, the, the company that does the heating problems does the, the air conditioning. <laughs> so they've been straight so out okay. fixing he people's heating problems. Okay. But as Dr. Carey said, uh, the, the PO was issued and it's just getting a timing issue okay. for them because they have to deal with the immediate okay. heating. So we have the money for that one. That's yes. not yes. something we have. And to once, the, uh, once they finish with the intercom system in Conway, they're here to work on this system. Okay. Here. This is number two in line and I'm hoping I'm hoping Conway should be done by the end of January, and then February will be Waitley. So I just met with the IT team today, and we chose uh, a phone that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same one the central office used, and there's going to be, you know, a big console for the main office, um, mm -hmm. slightly smaller consoles for my office and a couple of other key offices, and then the smallest phones, all the same company, you know, makes the phones in all the classrooms. So they chose the phone, and now. They're ordering the servers to go with it. Once the servers arrive, they're gonna to have to configure everything, wiring, so. Is there a lot of wiring involved? Stewart thought a month and a half, two months from now, we should be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there a lot of wiring? Is there a lot of wiring that have to be done? I really don't know the extent of it. Yeah. But with today's, you know, digital and you know, wireless, wireless side of things, you know, you think maybe, well, can we get wireless or? Yes, I don't need wire. Now I'm out of my 
Well, the capital planning meeting is next week, so I just want to be able to report on that, so that's good to know. That was kind of the big holdup, was the phone system. Mm -hmm. I mean, Selecting the phone. We've been, this has been going on for six months, and mm -hmm. what system would work the best? But did you say, Pete, um, the phone system's been chosen. Is there a new server? Is that what you said? So now that, now, now that the, the order. nervous system we're using, they need to order some servers. And again, I can't speak intelligently to whether it's one or two, but once those servers come, they need to be configured, is what Sarah told me. And um, you know, then the ball will be really, really good. Really now these guys are doing this, but also taking care of all the computer systems mm -hmm. for all the four schools. Five. Right. Five schools. Okay. And there's three of them. Yeah. Five or less, yeah. Okay. So I think we're in good shape. It just sounds like we need to get the sprinklers and the paving on the radar for the capital projects. The other, but just mindful of the meeting at Frontier, should we be putting forth any, and this isn't really our Waitley question, but should we be putting forth any Frontier capital projects to the town? I mean, I know we're a portion of. The only thing, the only thing that we're talking about as a, uh, a ward is possibly a portion of a, a, a new mower. As far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong. That's it. That's it. So does I get on this list? Though? I guess I'm just trying to figure, make sure everything's on the list that needs the town might need to. It's something I think we're on top. Yeah. And tomorrow we'll talk about it, but I think we'll do it at the budget subcommittee because they had asked for extra information on how much it would cost to have privately done, privately done mm -hmm. which it's <clears throat> apples and oranges because the job they do is a little different. Mm -hmm. But uh, that information is hard to come by. But we do know the hours that we've spent were, I think we're up to almost 14,000 hours on the, uh, the John Deere that we Top have. Mower? The small mower, the smaller mower. Mm -hmm. Which is used mm -hmm. from Deerfield Academy back in, I can't even tell you when we bought it. Had a good life. Had a really good life. And the yes. other one we bought from Look Park. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But we're on top of that. That's the only thing. Everything else we're, we're working on. A, um, so I'm just mindful of our meeting, though, where the Finance Committee was like, we want to know ahead of time what yeah. we're going to be asked to find. We'll have more tomorrow. After our meeting tomorrow night, we'll have you guys will share more that. grass. Okay. Yes. Um, and I do have this memorandum um, request from the town, mm -hmm. and it, it's about capital improvements in the budget, mm -hmm. so maybe I should just kind of read it. Um, this, the, this is the, uh, the budget season for fiscal year 2019 is fast approaching and I'd like to share with you some of my own thoughts and those discussed with the Waitley Finance Committee. The members of the Waitley Finance Committee felt it did not have sufficient opportunity to review the complete operating budget for the Waitley Elementary School and Frontier Regional High School before its meeting with the school district officials. The budget summary was provided in advance to the, me to the meeting but not the complete budget document. The town requests that the school provide the complete budget documents for both schools at least 14 days before its meeting with the Waitley Finance Committee. We can work together to set up a meeting date with the Finance Committee that will make this possible. I don't know if we have a date yet. We don't have a date. So I responded saying that I thought of mentioning our March meeting and saying that's our public meeting. And last year, Paul came to that meeting. He was on the finance committee. But I think they're asking to have a joint meeting. Again. I think, I think, like we went there to visit them back in the September. Fall. In yeah. September, I think they're looking for us to since we've we moved our March meeting from already, right? So yeah. we already moved our. Yeah. Whatever. Well, they were suggesting maybe the end of February scheduling a meeting, but don't you didn't. You guys go to meet with the finance we, meeting last year? We did, and, and I, I feel like I wasn't at that meeting. I'm, I'm confused as to why they're saying they didn't have the full budget document because this is the, this is, tonight is like a preliminary. And the only thing missing from this budget is the narrative because I'm not going to write the narrative if you guys tell right. me what you want changed. And I, yes, I send this, like, after tonight, after we look at this, I will send a copy of this over to Brian Domina in the morning and just say this is our first glance. Where we are, right. But when uh, Dr. Perry and I went, and Pete and uh, Darius went last year, they were all completed budgets with the narratives. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why that, what they're saying, they that they, they're, they're saying they, they wanted it more, yeah. further in advance. Yeah. They only they're saying meet, they wanted they only two weeks once, ahead. Yeah. They only meet once a month, mm -hmm. and 
that was their problem. They only got the chance to look at it one right, time instead of every one of them maybe getting a copy of this and you know Brian they calling like them up or something and say, "Here, right. you get we got one for everybody. Take it home weeks ahead of time before we meet, maybe before before our uh, public meeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could meet with them. You know, I know we go to finance committee and select boards." Mm -hmm after everything's been going but you know maybe they want us ahead of time i mean well i, I think I, this is that same meeting right right and with, with, we can't get it any earlier i mean january you know we're doing right. this five times in january right then i go back and i'm making the changes for for the five times so and then this year um which i think is um going to be extremely helpful um, Dr. Carey wants to add a PowerPoint where we'll have more visual aids, uh, where we'll be doing more charts and things so that people can see um, a, a, a different picture of the budget. Right. So and she and, and she's going to want that to at do the that. public meeting. She, she she wants to do that for the February, February meeting, meeting so that okay. you guys see the presentation yeah. before we do it at the public, Perfect. so that you guys get a so after tonight when we get your input you tell us I'm going to start going back and mm -hmm. getting this done so that Dr. Carey can then start on her PowerPoint for Waitley while I'm going ahead and finishing now working on right. we have um, Frontier tomorrow night. Okay. So if after February do you think it's pretty final? Like So, if so you we're going to review it again in February right. and then it should be. It might be final tonight. Right. Might be final tonight. Who knows? If, 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 if you tell us in February that is the budget right. that you're satisfied with and that is the budget you want to So I was trying to now. schedule it after our public hearing to give us more time, but it, it probably is better to do it before the public hearing, so maybe the week before, mm -hmm. and like that last week in February. As long as that's enough of time for them. Okay. <laughs> So that if you're watching tonight, so you're saying a meeting, a second meeting with us for finance committee, and they yeah, they, they often do one with the school administration. But they usually call us. School committee meeting. No, it's no, it's an extra. We meeting. go to okay. their meeting more. Yeah. Yeah. They'll call us and say, "Can you attend our meeting on this night right. at this time?" And, not, and sometimes not everybody can make it, so it's ideal if they can. And it's very difficult because then they, they because the, the towns don't seem to understand that we have five school committee meetings and they always want us on a night that we're at another school. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to get those um, scheduled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's easy enough to rep for us to represent it, we can do that too. Like it doesn't have, you know, right. maybe we well, can take I, the load yeah, off. I'm hoping too by having um, a focus point up there and a narrative. Uh, Pete's helping to write a narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, early childhood, special ed, the whole picture, mm -hmm. because that's what the town administrators wanted to see, the whole picture, like you said, yeah. where's the money going, not just a bunch of numbers, right. but the whole the picture. Book. And then we can answer questions and really help mm -hmm. fill out some of the uh, help them understand. questions. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I'm hoping, okay. we'll see how it goes. So anyway, uh, to continue, um, much like its other partner communities in the Frontier Region and Union 38 school districts, Waitley anticipates increases in health insurance and retirement costs, as well as other operational increases. The town understands the challenges that the school districts face, which contractually obligated raise, raises increases to health insurance and retirement, as well as the uncertainty of, of state funding. And we won't know state funding for another couple of weeks. With this in mind, please use your best efforts to keep any proposed budget increases um, to two and a half percent. Yeah. Right. The town made a significant investment in Waitley Elementary School last winter by installing an energy management system and LED lighting that, when operated properly, should result in significant energy savings as evidenced by reductions in electricity and natural gas usage. The town requests that the school district pay close attention to any decreased usage in these utilities and that any decreased need be appropriately re reflected in this year's budget. And I can tell you for a fact that Patty has done that. As evidenced by the discussion at the Frontier Regional Bond meeting, you were there, um, Katie. Yeah. The school district might consider whether some of these, uh, some of the items included in the bond proposal are more appropriately included in the annual maintenance. Uh, or the uh, repair budget line. And uh, thank you in advance for your hard work and cooperation. So this was really uh, a good memorandum for it's us. Helpful. Yeah, it tells is. us where they're thinking. 
as far as the Frontier Regional Bond, um, I don't, I don't see, um, I, th I see it as a longer process, especially after uh, Mr. Olasky, you know, illuminated us on what weight we went through to get their mm -hmm. funding. It's going to be a lot more, uh, a longer process mm -hmm. than asking this year anyway. So thank you for letting me read that. I mean, since we're on money, mm -hmm. maybe it's a good time to put other things aside for right this second and, and Look at the budget. budget. Look at the budget. I mean, I'm, yeah. We're it, instead of. I mean, everything else is important here, but since we're talking money, maybe we could. Don't you think? Well, yeah. I mean, well, you only have one. If you okay. only have one unfinished, more unfinished business, you yep. might want to finish that, that up and then, and then okay. just it, it, under new business okay. gotcha. push the budget up. Okay. Sorry. So. The next item was to um, approve the superintendent's goals, which we discussed last meeting. And I don't know if anybody has any further discussion points or questions or... I got a question. I, did you send me an email in the next meeting that we're going to have another um, group meeting, uh, the superintendent goal subcommittee? Did you send me something Not recently? Easily. Okay. I thought I saw... I'm involved with so many Budget meetings. Budget subcommittee tomorrow night at five o'clock. I'm actually going to probably going to oh, come okay. back. No, but I'm actually probably going to come and just listen. Sure. So. Um, there was a meeting tonight at five. I know for the other thing, I told them I, I told the days I could come and eat the school committee night. Well yeah. <laughs> okay. That's an important one too. So. Okay. So my <coughs> only thing, which is why I put the mission statement on, was to make sure that we're connecting all the different goals and mission statements mm -hmm. as we think about these things to make sure we're lining things up and not kind of at cross purposes so I don't think they're not at cross purposes they're at cross purposes right now but um, I just want to make sure as a group we're kind of monitoring that and making sure that things are on track so do you have any more thoughts on your goals or um, I want to entertain a motion to I make a motion to accept the superintendent's goals for 2017 2018. Mm -hmm. I second. All in favor? Aye. Mission statement. So, thank you for putting in the two mission statements in the packet. It was, I noticed that ours on top of the um, newsletter mm -hmm. the other day, and so. I don't, again, I don't really want to get into a big discussion about the mission statements right now. Putting together a mission statement is a hard thing, but I was curious to know the history of the mission statements and sort of how these came about and maybe get some thoughts on how people feel about them if we want to be changing going forward. The, the, the one that's on the news, um, on the newsletter mm -hmm. was developed during my time as your principal. Uh -huh. I think school council may have taken it up one year and worked on it, presented it to school committee and it was approved. Okay. The reason we have a second one is, um, and I thought that we were adopting the new mission statement for all four schools, uh -huh. but I'm not sure about that, Lynn. Is that what you want No, the vision for all four schools is what we adopted. This mission statement was here before I came, and this was the okay. mission statement that had been developed. Um, I'm not sure when it was developed, but this is the one that's on all my email. This is, this is the mission statement of the district. The vision um, of the district, which is somewhat similar to this, and I don't have it, it it's on our website. I have a question. Did, didn't we just develop the mission statement last year with, the our, vision. with our team? The vision, that was the one we developed last year, the vision statement. The mission is pretty much the same. You know, I mean, yes. Yeah, so it's on the policy. That they just, um, Building dynamic learning communities, one student, one teacher, one family. That's the mission that's statement. That's the mission statement. Yeah, district and that's vision statement. But the mission statement. Vibrant, collaborative, engaging, and inclusive learning communities promoting the growth yes. of every student as the district vision statement. Mm, no, that's not Is that different than the. So maybe this is sort of my point. It's like just, it would be good to be very clear about what all the different statements are and how they, yeah. how they should be guiding us in our work. Yeah, when I saw these in the documents. This one here says I, mission statement. 
That's and, the mission and, statement. And We're looking for the vision. We're looking for the vision. Right. What we talked so, about but was Katie's the asking about the mission statements. Yeah. And didn't, but didn't we just develop this together last year? This team? No, we developed. This one's different than this one. Statement. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I guess what I'm saying is this is still fairly new. I may have been may have been before then, uh -huh. but I remember working right. with our but team on the language of this right. within the past couple of years. Okay. Um, so, I don't remember. So when was, I saw these. And the intent was to have a unified district wide. So the idea was to have one for everybody? That's what I'm recalling. Well, but that's what it sounds like because it says Frontier Regional and Union 38 school districts. Is more this has to be the new one here versus the old one for just us. Yeah. The fact that it's still in our newsletter is just an oversight. You know, I don't think we uh -huh. ever removed it. But, okay. I, but I thought that this So you were one, thinking we would adopt that, this other one? I thought that was the purpose when okay. we developed this. We may have developed it before we got here, and I'm okay. just remembering okay. it correctly. Or about? Yeah. Well, maybe because we have a lot to talk about on the budget, we could table this if you guys want to come back at the next meeting on it with some clarity. That might be better. And sort it out in the moment. But that's what yeah. I think the but vision is um, the well, title. We had a discussion about uh, productive citizens. Do, do, uh, we, we had a discussion about educating, you know, on this. Uh, uh, I should know it by heart. No, try another school. Maybe yeah, I just, I think they can be helpful if they are used. In kind of unifying everybody's efforts. So, why don't we table this for now and, and come back to it next week, next meeting? Yeah, I'll get that vision. Because in some ways, it would be good to have it in the narrative. Like, here's what our mission statement is, and incorporate it there. It's already in the vision. This mission statement and the vision statement that we're just looking for uh -huh. is the header for our narrative. For our, okay. Yeah, it's already there. Okay. That's how we open our narrative. Would it be easy to change? Put that on this. Oh yeah, that's that's no problem. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. like I said, that just stayed on there because nobody had the forethought to remove it and replace it with this one. If indeed this is the desire of school committee and our superintendents to have one mission statement for all the four schools, and that's not a question I can answer. Yeah, this is the mission statement for all the schools. It's the vision that we worked on this summer. The vision mm -hmm. statement that. Um, is on our strategic plan. I asked to have the strategic plan put on. Does, does anything say anything about the strategic plan? I'm back in the home. Yeah, look under that because it's a district strategic plan and I asked to have that put on. What's different between a vision plan and a mission statement? Which one's well, a vision statement tends to be more aspirational, sort of broader and it's hard. Like these things are a little yeah, nuanced. The mission statement until, until until and then the mission statement is more kind of guiding principles of how you should be you should be I asked you to put doing the work. I believe implementing the vision. No, I don't have access to. And then you have the goals, yeah. which are underneath that. Right. right. So. Does anybody have the strategic plan with them? The strategic plan has the vision on it, and the school committee, the joint school committee, agreed to the um, the vision in. I remember that in October. Yeah. That the strategic plan has the vision that we developed. The strategic plan was developed by the admin team um, and the vision. And that's what we came up with. There it is. Well, I like this just in terms of any feedback. I like the one where you talk about the students, the teachers, and the families. There is your vision. That's yeah. nice too. The, we've so got it. the vision is Frontier Regional and Union 38 schools will create vibrant, collaborative, engaging learning communities that empower students to become successful and self-sufficient participants in society. That's the vision that we developed right. as a team. And that's fine. I mean, I, I think what I was trying to say was that I don't think anybody wants to do anything about that, or changing that. I think Katie was asking about the two different mission statements. So that's all. Well, I, I guess because it is, it is, it, half of that is on the front page, mm -hmm. 
but it's not where you can easily find it, and it's not incomplete. So, but yet there is a section that says click on the vision statement, but it's the old one, so we don't know why it hasn't uh, been updated. And I had asked to okay. have that done, but we I'll look into that tomorrow. And I'm really sorry because we did work hard as a team to come up with that vision statement. Okay. Um, this mission statement was here when I got here, and um, I I just love it so. And I immediately put it on my email the uh -huh. first day on the job. But the mission, we really didn't have um, a real succinct mission. And so we worked with what we had. Vision. vision. The vision. <laughs> and what we had had. And we answered some questions and we worked in small teams. And then we came up with that vision. And then that vision went to the school committee. Uh, with the strategic plan that was also developed by the admin team mm -hmm. um, and that we have a much longer strategic plan but this is the one that is on our website okay. for the communities to see and um, the school committee did um, they actually voted on it okay so um, so these should be our guiding principles as we're thinking about our budget Yes, uh, I agree. Things, I would think, just a good reminder. And that's going to be on the PowerPoint. Top. I was going to say, it should be right on the top. <laughs> that's so, it's, so it's safe to say that as far as our newsletter having the old statement on it, we can just replace it. Well, yeah. You can replace it with... Everyone's okay with that. I mean, I guess that's what I want to make sure. No, I would replace it with the other mission statement, yeah. this one here. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I we have the, we didn't... There was never any intention here at Waitley to keep our old mission statement. No. So we just never removed it from the header of the newsletter. <laughs> Do we have to have a vote on? Okay. Like so this is our mission statement now for all four of the. Uh, so the last time we'll the last time we'll see it is right here. Yes. And every month on statement. the newsletter. Yeah. Uh, well, if you look at um, Darius Modesto, the high school principal, his email also has this. Right. So the, you know, the, uh, right. Ideally, everybody starts to embrace it, and it becomes yeah. part of a lot of the communications. The, the kicker is that mission versus vision. Mm -hmm. And the vision is what drives our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So what we do strategically. And the mission is more how you do it. The, yeah. Thank you. OK. Sorry about that. Ah. So the campaign finance. That's just for us to sign. Do, do we have another signing? Or yeah. one here? You want got a loose one. Let's, let's sign our life away before yeah, they come and start fa finding us. Yeah. What's the date today? Today's the 8th. Oh, it's 1-8-18. Oh, there's Leslie's birthday. birthday. Played him in my office all day today. <laughs> Jamron had time to come in and take care of the, the heating system and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and Bob told me we shouldn't have to worry. We never have to worry. always have to worry about things. But so I told him I went by the blue school one day because he's got a light down there that I go by every day. And he gave me a key just in case there was a problem. I saw a light on. So the next day I went, happened to stop by there, went down the cellar. And I said, Wow, it's pretty warm in here. This is this is toasty. And then I met up with a lady. Says I've been checking on the buildings up to one to two times a day in all the buildings during that real cold spell yes. and stuff. So I'm glad we didn't have any major major yeah. frozen valve and you know, the cusses. I think Tom got it the worst. Huh? Yeah. Did they did they have any broken water damage? Yes. In the, in, in a classroom. A couple of elbows, nothing um, no flood or anything, but it certainly wet a bunch of this. So do can you will you hand this into the town for us or do we need to get it to them? We can hand it in to the I don't know. Twentieth day is the year. I have to bring report, the, right? I have to bring the warrants over so I can have Could I can you hand it with yes. that? Okay. okay. It's the year end. Yes. yes. Yeah. Campaign year of 2017. 
Make sure we clean all the money. <laughs> Is it July or June? Uh, I think it's the or annual thing. I think it's the calendar year. But they can fill it. <coughs> Like that. But one time I didn't see your daughter, mm -hmm. and I'm looking and looking. So those little kids we are just running. left them in there. <laughs> <laughs> they were running around a lot, a lot in there. <laughs> okay, so we can do the school improvement plan and then the budget. Okay. So you had the school improvement plan now for a week or so, I think. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll ask you if you have any questions. I it's a very very similar plan to last year's plan because you know, changing it every year doesn't make sense. Uh, these are things that take that over time are things we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think if we want to look through that, look through it a little bit together, I'm happy to do that and point out some of the things that, um, that we have done that um, you know, uh, match up well with the school improvement plan, reaching out to the community as, as I think you know, we've had a number of uh, workshops for families in the evening and um, some of the outreach we wanted to do, et cetera. But let me, let me rather than repeat what's in the plan, uh, Happy to entertain any of your questions. Mm -hmm. I think it aligns well with our district goals. There's always going to be something that's very specific to our school, like you know Conway or Deerfield or Sunderland may have their own. Um, and certainly, we want to maintain our focus on preschool, uh, special education, uh, and community outreach, and really partnering with the community. And I think those are the three. Sort of a push in our school. I'm so happy that preschool thing has really taken off. And yeah. We just did, we just didn't give it enough. Of, I didn't give it enough of a chance because I was there the first time when we. It's all your it. fault. Blame me. <laughs> but um, I just don't think we gave it enough of a chance. You know, we heard rumors, so we jumped at it, and we just didn't give it enough of time, so I'm, I'm kind of And happy. then the rumors didn't come to fruition. We heard that they were closing, but yeah. they didn't close, so the kids didn't come, and then, yep. so, hindsight is everything. Right. Yeah. Um, I was glad to see and hear, which to me I think is a little different, is this in the academic instructional diversity of learning, differentiating instruction, accessing interests, and setting the bar high for rigorous academics. I think that yeah, I was happy to see that included because I know we've had discussions in the past where that wasn't necessarily in there. So I do think that's a good thing for the community to set the bar high and to try to achieve it whenever we can. Um, there are two examples in my uh, in my principal's report tonight too that relate back to the school improvement plan. And again, we can wait for that or we can tie them in now if you'd like. Yeah, what are you so, yeah. so if you look at numbers uh, two and three mm -hmm. on, uh, on my principal's report, <clears throat> the community preschool screening day, something that's been going on for a few years in our district is that Kim, Kim and her team put out um, through advertising flyers, you know, uh, letting the community know the four towns that we have this preschool screening day. And, um, and this year um, we have seven families bring their child to us, and that's that's a lot. That's more than we've had. Um, but the good thing about that is that, you know, the purpose of it is to find, it, to identify if there's any children in our communities that need some services well in advance, because we all know that the sooner we get to them, the better off they'll be. Um, but it also brings families into our school. They get to meet us, they get to see our, our building, they get to see our preschool, and, um, and hopefully they choose to come bring their kids here. Um, so again, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, but there it is, uh, a lot of hard work went into it, and, and this year we had more folks show. We actually had seven families sign up, six came, and we, and we identified three kids that needed services. So there's three more kids out there that, had they not seen our flyers or advertising, they would come to preschool in a year or two and, and have not had their needs addressed. But, um, but or not come till kindergarten. Or not come till kindergarten, thank you very much, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, and you'll also remember that in, uh, well not remember, but it's right in front of you, that this, um, this newsletter also tied in an article that I didn't write, because um, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's a good article about the importance of, of getting kids early in preschool. It was an NPR writer who wrote that, so I wanted to share that with the community. And that, of course, ties into our school improvement plan. And then, um, and then the Global Leaders, uh, number three on my, on my um, principal's um, report is that we have changed the focus and the scope of what we used to call our student council. 
our student council has now become our global leaders group. And, um, and again, today, Terry Anderson shared with me the quote that I included on my uh, principal's report that I think really ties it all together, that globally competent students are curious about and engaged in the world. They are increasingly able to investigate the world beyond their immediate surroundings, understand their own and others' cultural perspectives, communicate across differences, and take action to improve conditions. That second to la that last sentence, that, that part, communicate across differences, I think is so critical in this day and age. We are a country becoming more and more polarized and, and not willing to find common ground. And I think that um, we want our students to, you know, to develop these types of skills where, um, where we can communicate across differences and take action to improve our conditions. And it's never too young to start doing that. And, uh, and again, I think that ties in um, with our uh, school improvement plan as well in terms of understanding the diversity of learners and certainly the use of um, technology and all of the things that play into uh, being well-rounded citizens. And I think that's more important than ever. So that's what I um, wanted to share with you tonight for the principal's report. And again, back to the school improvement plan. If you have other questions or concerns or anything you'd like to see uh, changed or updated, I'm happy to hear that. So does this get shared with the teachers and the staff and everybody here? Or have, well, I guess Not what's yet. the sort of communication It does plan? get shared with everybody. Yeah. But, um, we have to approve it. We have to approve it? Go. So once we approve it, then it gets shared with everybody. Any other questions thoughts? No. I just, can you tell me who Mike Anderson is? I've seen him in that. Yeah, so Mike Anderson is a trainer that's been working in our district for two, for two years, two full years at least. Uh, I don't know if this is the third year we've had it or not. Um, but he's very focused on differentiation in the classroom and differentiating instruction to meet the needs of all learners. Um, it's really where the connection is with uh, diversity of learners. You know, um, Sally Rice also, if you, if you turn the pages in your lately at Whitman, there's a lot of nice connections this month. Um, Sally has a short article in there about uh, neurodiversity and the notion that um, uh, Robeson, I think, is the name of the gentleman who put out the, the theory that neurodiversity isn't, you know, people who have um, autism, for example, aren't necessarily um, the, you know, sort of the defective end of the spectrum, but rather sort of the natural evolution of who we are as human beings, uh, that there are some brilliant, brilliant people um, who are on the spectrum, like this man. Uh, is it Paul Robeson? Did you, did you is it what I was thinking of? Sally Rice, yeah. speech and language, the speech and language yeah. section. Robeson, Robeson yeah. is Robeson. Um, Elder John Robinson. Right. So, so we're seeing just like you know all other schools, we're seeing a wider range of neurodiversity in our school, different types of learners, right? Whether you talk about it as learning styles or kids who have strong proclivities here and maybe some not so strong um, skills in other areas. And the idea is that we have to educate all of them and bring them all. That's why social-emotional learning has become such a big deal in our public schools. Um, so, so um, the, you know, that, that concept of diversity in the classroom then begs the question, well, how do we reach all these kids? And people like Mike Anderson say, by differentiating your instruction, by meeting them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And so, so we've had two years of really excellent work with Mike Anderson that all of our faculty have participated in. Um, and, and it includes everything, you know, when Dr. Carey came to the district, she talked to us a lot about um, uh, even simple things like offering a variety of different types of seating for kids, using tables instead of desks and chairs, making kids comfortable in the classroom so that if they want to sit in a back jack chair, here's an example of, you know, things we didn't have in the school five years ago. We only had them for kids who had poor core strength, so we got them these little chairs to help them sit up during circle time. Now we've learned that Lots of kids can benefit from things like this. And, and so differentiation, to answer your question, has just been a strong part of that initiative with an excellent trainer. Yeah. And I, I, thought, I thought that was interesting as a lay person, not being an educator and understanding why I'm, you know, I, I always want to know, like, why do, why do we want to spend money on these things? And, and it was just very interesting to me that, um, that children, the way that they physically sit or stand, helps their learning process. And when you really think about it, when you're doing your reading, 
you get in your favorite chair, you put on your favorite light, and it's the sort of the same thing, and yet we put children all in the same environment. So as a layperson, it was very interesting to, me, to, to hear those things, because when you think of differentiation and instruction, you just think of teaching children in different manners, not just how physically the classroom should be set up. So I just, I thought that from a lay perspective that that was a very interesting. I saw interesting. that last year going into the fifth grade class, how different pillows and different seats and everything in the fifth grade class just to help them mm -hmm. get by every single day is, is, is being comfortable and, and you know, I heard it's going quite well this year, much better. That's, that's great. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept the 2017-18 school improvement plan. All in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, Patty, it's your turn. <laughs> only, only when the chair tells me to. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pass out to you um, our first glance of our budget. So the only thing that we're really missing here is our narrative. Um, so if you look on um, page one of 22, um, well the, thir the second page is the introduction of the school committee and the participants in the budget process. And then page one of 22 is our, our student staff and data sheet um, that Dr. Carey brought to us last year. And I absolutely love this yeah. page. Um, it is such a great snapshot for us to see. Um, at the top, we had the goals. Now, I don't know, I haven't had the conversation with Dr. Carey with the narratives of this, that part's gonna go away, or I've gotta wait for the new, I need Pete to send me the new goals from the strategic plan. So we've gotta have that conversation, but I took out last year's because I didn't know where it was gonna be. Um, so on the left is our student data, and this is the data that we reported to DESE on October 1st, and this, data is what we will be funded for in FY19. Um, and then what I did down below, I just projected what the fifth grade into sixth, the fourth grade into fifth. Um, and if you look though, the kindergarten numbers are, are significantly low. The only thing I'm reporting there are our current pre-K school, uh, pre-K kids who we know are coming to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And we have not had open enrollment yet. I believe that happens late January, early February. We're for kindergarten, we're enrolling now. We're enrolling yeah. now. So if you would keep me abreast uh, so I can keep this, um, that, would be, that would be wonderful. Uh, and on the right hand side is our staffing. And as you can see, there are some changes. Um, and we, I, we talked about this earlier, um, we, reduced our instructional assistance by two and increased our special education teachers by one. Uh, and that's the only thing that we've changed, but we did change that in the 17-18 budget, not going into the, to the budget. So right. um, one of the other things that uh, we had Deerfield last week, uh, one of the other things that Dr. Carey would like us um, to see, which doesn't aff affect Waitley, um, as much as it does other schools, is that she would like to see us uh, break the instructional assistance down between classroom instructional assistance and um, instructional assistance that are required for IEPs yeah. and or 504 one on one. plans. Yeah. So um, as I said, that doesn't really affect uh, Waitley as much, um, but I will break that out um, going forward. And then on the bottom, um, we, we, are, we were breaking out where our teachers are on the scale, on the um, compensation scale. These are the columns of the compensation scale. So we have three with bachelors, one with a bachelor's, 50 and 15 credits, uh, 12 with a master's, two with a master's, 15, two with a master's plus 30, and two with master's plus 45 or a CAGS. Um, so that shows us um, where our teachers are educationally. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. On the Spanish teacher, I thought you said we went from 0.20 to 0.40 on we Spanish. We did, so I need to update that. But I thought he was doing um, 
ESL. ESL. So I, I will make that Spanish teacher slash ESL. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I did forget that. Just happen to see it. Okay. Um, okay, so and then page 2 of 22 is our page where... Wait, I'm sorry. Can you just go back to the staffing? So you, sure. For next year, are we predicting any more changes? Oh, uh, we have one degree change. One degree change. No, but uh, one possible degree change. The staffing, though, in terms of. Oh that. no. Uh, P, um, so we're staying the same as we are this year. There's no recommendations for increasing. No, there is one recommendation for decreasing, and I and I should have um, mm -hmm. changed that, and I That's didn't. Right. Um, oh, Pete is recommending um, that the custod the nighttime custodian do four hours a night instead of five hours a night and that we split uh, the shift uh, so that there's less overlap between the day and more coverage at night. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have to do the math to see if that goes down to a 1.5. The other thing would be the music teacher. Did you? Did that, yeah, no, 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 that's... Oh, okay. That's, we worked that Mixed out. Mixed it up with another school. You, we worked that out through emails this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I will make those changes. Um, page two of twenty-two is our our summary of changes to show that our town funded budget for eighteen was one million six forty two fifty six, and the FY nineteen budget would increase sixty thousand fifty five dollars or three point six six percent to one million seven hundred three hundred eleven dollars. And the reason for this is that the negotiated steps is going to cost us thirteen thousand three forty nine. The negotiated two and a half percent increase will cost us twenty one thousand five seventy eight. We do have a potential degree change, and that will only cost us one hundred and sixty nine because they're only with us as a point one. <laughs> can, can I just ask? Sure. Um, where are these steps? Is that the steps, steps. of the staff member right. where they line? Correct. So okay. if I if I'm a five, if I if I'm on step five and I have a master's degree, I step to step six. Okay. The next year. Yeah. And then the next year I step to seven. Okay. So, so that's um, preset. Right. How that's going to change every year. And the reason I I've broken that out, Maureen, in the past few um, years is because. We tell if we say to the community there's a negotiated two a negotiated two and a half percent increase, and they see that they're the the cost of the salaries are going up five percent. They don't understand that that there's other things except the the negotiated uh, percent. So that's why I break it out between steps. People who are continuing their education and they're moving columns, and then also the negotiated rate. Okay. Um, we have 4,709 for uh, non-union salary increases, which we will bring to you in May and um, vote in June. Um, we added, I guess, a staff of good students. <laughs> snuffle off again. Um, I, I moved the staffing of the new SPED teacher here um, that increased us by $51,024. Uh, decrease in the cafeteria staffing, 2,938. That was based on the study that was done, um, and that was the savings. Decreasing the one hour of the custodian will save us $4,194. Uh, we had a new hire in our OT, so we did not lose uh, time on service. It was just that she came in at a lower rate, so we saved 6320 and uh, I talked to um, Ms. McCarthy, and she believes that we can use another $10,000 from the Early Child Revolving Fund to fund the teacher's salary uh, because the program is doing that well. So we increased uh, the funding by $10,000 there. Um, the operational increases, the central office percentage for Waitley changed from 9.21% to 10.16, which is a big jump. So that added $19,366 to the budget. Now we did have a lot of savings in our budget because of the bill. We still own the building, but we're keeping it. We took out all um, the. There's no wireless internet service in the building. 
um, anymore, but we have to keep the lights and the, heat's on, the heat on, so there are some minimal costs. But what really is driving this is the new, um, not the whole 19, but um, the, ed the addition of the uh, district-wide food service director, you're seeing that in there for the first time. So why is it going up? Uh, this is the percentage we're paying, though, of the overall. Of the, right. So why is that So if you, if you go, of right, if you go to the last page, Katie, mm -hmm. uh, and look here, um, Waitley last year uh, had 129 students, and this year, on October 1st, they had 140 students. So that was a big so jump. We had a bigger proportion. Yep. And because if you look above, Sunderland had uh, 258, and they went down to 238. Deerfield stayed about the same, and Conway also had a small um, decrease. Um, okay, and then um, the technology softwares uh, decreased 5,694. Professional development expenses, we were able to decrease 150 twice for the two IAs, but then had to increase 600 for the new teacher, so it ended out to a $300 increase. Uh, school committee um, increased $75, $25 per head for your salaries. That's that that line, is, that, that is, that the, is that the line item that we were talking about earlier there? Mm, no, this is, um, you know, every meeting, uh, every year at town meeting, they give you guys a small stipend increase, so. It has to be reflected in the budget. We're going to have $25 more in our Thank two checks. <laughs> uh, trans Four taxes. Right. Our transportation costs are going to increase um, for our regular $848. And that doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to check that for a second. Before Probably a fuel. Nope. It, it, it was a 1.83, and that's just, um, this is just a guess. This is based on a consumer price index. So I projected what did, what I think December will be based on what September, October, and November were. So right now it looks like it will be a 1.83% increase. Um, and this is, uh, the 19 will be the fifth year of our five-year contract. So we'll be needing to talk about what we're gonna do with our next contract. Um, there are, the Franklin County business managers are working um, on some things and um, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I want to get that information and bring it to the school committees. Wait, I'm sorry, which, which line were you talking about? The, the transportation, transportation, that's our regular transportation okay. line. Our big, what I call the big buses. Mm -hmm. um, operational decreases, we decreased um, the principal's dues by 400. Um, Pete felt that, that he could take $500 less in advertising. Um, our spending transportation, we're going to decrease it by 1800 because the, the children we will be transporting are school choice, so we'll just charge it there and get it back through school choice. So we're going to take the $1,800 out of the budget. Um, as Dr. Carey had read you that um, that memo, I looked at our, the, the, our trends in electricity and building heat, and I think we can safely reduce our electricity by about 8,000 and our building heat by 10, and that's looking at th uh, three years of numbers. So I'm pretty comfortable that we can decrease that uh, and still be okay. Um, and then last year we had uh, some retirements and this year we have none so that adds back 12905 So that brings us to the total of $60,055 which is an increase of 3.66%. So the decrease in electricity and building heat was um, from that Energy management system. Mm -hmm. On um, this is just a question. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not reading it right. But on this page, on page two, um, salary related costs. We're showing the new SPED staff salary. Yes. One down, but it doesn't show the offset in this on this page from the two IA positions that we eliminated. Should it? You no, know, because the two IA positions were in school choice, and what I I'm know. doing is I'm taking <clears throat> this new SPED teacher off school choice, gotcha. and when we get to that page, you'll, you'll see why I'm making that as a suggestion, and you guys can put it back if you want to get this below 3.66%. Mm -hmm. gotcha. I just wanted to show so you this. This is just the town. The, this is what we would be asking the town for, and I know that 3.66 is, they're probably looking for less than that. Mm -hmm. Two and a half. 
<laughs> right. Um, but we Sully could and must be Sully. Uh, or we change we change our philosophy on how we're using our school choice funds. Well, that's so we're already changing. <laughs> yeah. So pages um, three through eleven is going through by detail by line item what that page two just summarized for you. So you can go through that at your leisure and. Um, and read that and through that. If you go to page 12, this is where we look at all our funds. And oops, I forgot to change 18 to 19. Um, so the first column is the town appropriation column that we just looked at and should total the 1.7 million. Okay, so I bring that over. And then we look at school choice. So. Um, if you pages 12 and 13 are mostly the administrative so page 14 is where we're really seeing this so um, if you look there we have $27,000 in the early childhood revolving that's for our pre-k extended care person who works um, eight hours a day um, the in the school choice column $96,097 that those are the, the two specialists, uh, teacher specialists that we've been funding there. And then in medical and therapeutic, 73,721 in school choice, that's our speech therapist. Uh, towards the bottom, there these are our instructional assistants. We are uh, 97,286 <coughs> for our classroom and 24,259 for the one IA that we say is SPED. And if you look to the right of that, uh, $30,720, we're paying one IA out of the revolving account, which I think may be an error, and I need to go and check on that. Because, no. you mean the oh, I'm sorry. The 27000 is the teacher. Uh, we were, last year it was 17000 We add the 10, the 27000 is the funding for the teacher. The 30720 is the extended day pre-K teacher. I'm sorry, I confused those two numbers. And Which to one's the, the pre-K? It, it's called EC revolving column. So the 27, so this is the teacher. So those are the two people um, that are there. That are funded. This is the spend or early childhood. Early childhood. And then the SPED grant pays for one of our IAs, and that totals 24259 so if you look at this, if, if you were to look at our, the, what we at, look at the town, you would think our teachers, we only spend 530,577. But this sh clearly shows you that with all our funding, we pay 5,557, 577,000 for teachers in total, because we're using other funding sources. Same thing with our teacher specialists. If you were to look at just the town appropriation, you would think we were only spending 123,437. When you look at all funding sources, it's 219,534. What are the two positions that are in the school choice right now? On the, on the specialist, it's our Spanish and ESL teacher combined, mm -hmm. and also our reading, t uh, our reading recovery teacher. Mm -hmm. For 96,097? Yes. Our reading teacher is just shy of a uh, of full time. She's point ninety three. And who's that again? Uh, Wendy Will. No, he, what's her position? I'm sorry. She, reading recovery. Uh, she's reading specialist is her title now, but yeah, she's trained reading recovery teacher. Is it reading intervention? That's why it's a specialist because she's not a classroom teacher. Sorry. More on one on one. What I in think groups. in, in, in groups. reading recovery, I think they, I think it's kind of like one on two is like the maximum that she'll be okay. for. Because she's a trained reading recovery teacher, but also has her master's in, in okay. reading and, uh, and works with kids in all grades. Reading recovery is really focused on first graders, so she gives us that as well as uh, you know across the building support for kids who continue struggling. So, so the oh, go ahead. So the speech therapist is out of school choice 73,721. Mm -hmm. And that's one teacher for 73,000. Yes. Okay. And then 
the physical therapy is and the occupational therapy and materials add up to the other 29,000 out of on the regular budget. Correct. All right. So then on page 15, there's really no other um, additions there. Um, if you go to page 17, uh, if you look in the uh, school choice column, I have $12,600, and that would be to the um, the two students that we have in the WINGS program, one is a sixth grader, so they will be a frontier issue next year and not a, a responsibility of um, Waitley. Okay. So this would be the transportation of that one child to the WINGS program. Just one? Yes. And then on page... But do we get reimbursed for that 12,000, 600, percent Yes, we will. Uh, and then on page 20 of 22 on school choice, uh, you will see the tuition to mass schools, and that is the tuition for the WINGS program. So if you look at the bottom of this page, we are asking the town for 1,700,311, and that's really 80.57% of our total budget. And then school choice uh, would provide 15.75%, the early child revolving 2.73% and the SPED grant would be 24259 for a total uh, FY19 expenditure for the, the Waitley Elementary School of $2,110,424. Um, now page 21 of How much 20, is that up from last year? Uh, that's a good question. And let me, is that that 3.66? Uh, is it, 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 that it would be more, a little, it could be a little more than that. The I have to go back to last year's budget. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, it's in our thing here. Yeah. Uh, uh, where is it? Okay, last year the total funding was one million nine ninety seven four seventy eight. Let me just write that down and then flip back to my other budget. My, my thing has two my million skills and says Mine has two million, two million nine thousand eight hundred fifty nine dollars budgeted. Well, we I'm might. I'm just asking. Well, our published budget was one nine nine seven. We might have had some changes. So it's a total increase of $112,946 from the previous year. What percent would that be? Hmm. 5.7%. Some of that is the EC going up, which is good. Right. And that's covered from that funding. Right. Mm -hmm. How much money do we have in EC? Uh, I don't know at this exact moment. I just know that we're ahead of the game. Well, well that would be good where we could budget the revenues so we can make sure that we're covered. Let me see if I have my most recent estimate from Ms. McCarthy in my email. Correct me if I'm wrong, the spend revolving the grant is Uh, the, the Fed grant is the 9442. It's a federal entitlement grant. And we pay. We get one uh, IA paid from there. Is that the IA that's in the kindergarten? Remember, did we used to pay for a kindergarten aid out of something at one time? I don't remember so. Okay. It, it, you know what? I have to change this every year because um, principals have the right of assignment. So. Um, at the at the time when this person was hired, they might have been doing some special ed work, and now they could be assigned to a classroom. So I have to usually look with Karen Ferrandino every year and check with the principal to see where he has people assigned, and I have to sometimes switch people out because they need to be working with special education students. Right. 
So I don't remember <laughs> that before. Is that new? No. We've, no. Had, that before? we've had that before. We've always, mm -hmm. we've always had it. And it's an entitlement grant, like Title One and Title Two. Mm -hmm. So do we always get that? Or? We do. Um, and w what um, one of the things that we have to, um, to, to to maintain that grant, we have to show our, the maintenance of effort that our local budget is supporting SPED um, to the max effort as to the best of their effort uh -huh. in order to get the grant. And I think you can also use it on transportation too. It's the, 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 the transportation is never included. Really? Uh, but one of the things I, I may have to do, and, I, and again, I need to sit down with um, our SPED director, Ms. Ferrandino, I may have to switch out our mm -hmm. speech teacher, put her back into the regular budget, and maybe take our librarian and put her on the school choice mm -hmm. budget so that the uh, local budget's holding the maintenance of effort on the SPED, on, on the SPED grant. So I have to check. I have to check with her and and, and do some maintenance of effort calculations. I got, I got a question. So on page 14, that's where the real problem is: is that we have a good portion of the special teachers. In Not so much choice. the special teachers, but but, then but then the um, special ed, uh, the speech, speech. Uh, providing speech therapy. Yeah. Well, that's like the majority of the right. salary money. Is exactly. Out there. I mean, it's not really about the teachers; it's just about the dollars that right. are allocated. To right. Those, so so the, because she provides sped services, mm -hmm. she really should be on the local budget to help us prove our maintenance of effort, and the librarian can be used in the school choice, and their salaries are similar. Mm -hmm. um, so that I may be switching that out after I review these with. Ms. Ferrandino. Where is the librarian salary? Uh, it would be um, yeah, I didn't tell where it is. She's on page six of twenty-two. Okay. Uh, right at the top. And then um, the bigger but challenge is all the IAs are really coming out of special Right. All but forty, fifty thousand dollars. Right. I think there's one IA in the regular budget. And the problem we're going to have is we got to slow it down because we're a year and a half on on school choice money spending it. Right. So gotta, now we got we got so this last page, this right last twenty one of twenty two. I'm, I'm I'm breaking out where we thought we were going to be and where we are. So if this is our our um, school choice. So projected FY eighteen. This is where we thought we'd be. We thought we'd be starting the year. Neg at negative twenty four thousand three seventy three, we ended up with a positive nineteen thousand two twelve. Part of that was you had approved us to buy a snowblower. We hadn't, we didn't do it. We've done it now, but we didn't do it um, back then. Back when we when we were doing the fit configuration of the numbers, uh, the projected revenue from FY seventeen we thought was going to be two twenty eight eight seventy. Came in five thousand one hundred and twenty-one dollars lower at two hundred two hundred twenty-three seven forty-nine. So we thought we would have available to spend two hundred four four ninety-seven. We actually have two forty-two nine sixty-one. And again, it's going to sound repetitious, but so we added the thirteen thousand three forty-two is adding the ESL piece. The sped teacher added forty-seven, but then the we saved 48 on the IAs. Um, the sped uh, instructional sped speech therapist stayed the same. But then this year we added the tuition for the person that we knew left, and added some transportation and bought the snowblower. And if you'll remember, we got that one uh, time only uh, circuit breaker money. And I say it's one time only because the child we received it for this year was a sixth grader, so next year that money will go to Frontier as, as circuit breaker money. Where does that money show up? Um, I, I, I did not show it. Okay. Um, but we're going to use it to pay some of the tuition this year because it has to be used for spend costs. So because we've had these two tuitions pop up, it was $16,000, so we're just going to use 16000 of the total uh, tuition that we're going to be paying for the wings program out of the circuit breaker and we're not getting it again so I didn't show it as another revenue mm -hmm. stream revenue stream but so what's the bottom line Will that come in at the end of before the end of this year yes we'll get it in June so this total at the end would be lower 
So they are 365 total spent So right now, okay, so right now if you look at actual FY18, we are going to be in the hole 122,358. Mm -hmm. But we're not really going to be in the hole because our FY18 money will be coming in. So what we're basically saying is we're spending $122,358 of the 18 revenue where we've always just spent the previous year. Revenues. Does that make sense? So the year, the revenue up here, this revenue, the 223, that's last year's revenue? That, that's, that's the 17? actual for FY17. And then, okay. okay, and then projected for FY19, I have um, the number eight, I, I have the number that they gave us in December for their proposal and then I adjusted it by what I know we'll get back uh, for. So they projected that we would have 234,582. Based on our, our October report, they're saying that we would get 234,582 for revenue. But then I add back the tuitions because they're not there. I, and so I'm saying it will really probably be 323,356 when I add back the tuitions and the transportation. So looking there, and we are projected to use $332,463. So in, in effect, we'll be spending $131,465 of FY19 revenue. Because what, that 323 is our FY18 revenue. And if I pop back in the 51049 for that teacher and took her back off our budget, we would then be spending $182,514 of school choice FY19 money. But it would also bring down, if I take her out, we would then be presenting the town with an increase of $9,031 or 0.55%. So I think there's a middle ground. Maybe we don't use the teacher. Maybe we pull off an IA. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many students does the speech therapist help in our school? I don't have that data. So that's a great question, Bob. And one of the things that I, I'm, I wish there was a better term or a better title for what our speech pathologist does. Um, they don't just do speech and they don't just I do it, right? Yeah. I, I would say that 75% of the kids in this school benefit from our speech and language pathologist because okay. she runs social pragmatics groups, she runs friendship groups with kids, she works with kids who have you know speech impediments and works with them, um, she you know does language. It's, it's such, speech pathologists do such a wide range of things these days. Um, that um, I think it's an invaluable position. I think that um, I, would, I would say 75% of our kids benefit from her services in one way or another. Um, she helps to deliver, she assists teachers in delivering our social emotional curriculum. Um, just, it's just more than I can talk about right now. It's a very, very important position for our school these days. And again, um, if, if, you're, if you're reading what's out there about social and emotional learning, um, we talk about it a lot, but there's got to be somebody who does it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's in our school, it's, it's Sally. It's, it's her position. She does so much of that. So that, so what I gave you uh, was what uh, was was one scenario mm -hmm. of what it would look like. Um, and I know that uh, three six six is too high, but 0.55 there's probably going to be a middle ground. So if you want to give me a total of a percentage that you'd like to see us request from the town, I can then look at the positions and move something over. So if you want us to come in exactly at 2-5, I can, I can do that. Uh, I'm just looking for some direction. Can we end the year with a negative in our school choice account? We, we can, Katie, because it's really not a negative because we that whole 223 is already sitting in there, and part of that 323 is coming in every month. <laughs> okay. 
so it's going to catch up. But it's yeah, gonna, but it's going to catch up. And then we're going to have nothing point. Yeah, we're going to have, and we're always going to have something. So we have to address that, right? Somehow, sooner or later, right? And it, and one of the things is, um, you know, uh, with uh, Pete, we'll have to decide: Will you need as and it, and it's early in the year to. The problem is it's early in the year to tell if his ESL, he'll need that much ESL next year because ESL is different. If these kids came in as one, two, which are our lowest, very low English speaking students, we're gonna need more ESL next year. But if they came in as three or fours, they may not, he may not need a point two ESL next year. So, but it's too early in the year to tell because Mr. Edgerly has just started working with these well, not only that, but we also don't know if we'll get more ESL students next year. We haven't for years, but we have four now in our building. Oh, they all came at once. And, and we could get out of the four, how many are school choice? Can you say that? Um, I think half of them okay. are school choice. Maybe, maybe more, but I'm not sure. So. Just kind of just asking a question. So, if two out of the four for the specialists that we have, yeah, do we get more money? No, no. Just special education. So, <clears throat> the money from the tuition for full-time preschool is that all being used where it can be used? Right. So, we, what we did was we high, we were able to. Um, Hire the extended day for the 37th, um, and she also gave us the additional $10,000. Um, the per, I, I don't have the projection, but we can look at that um, to see what she's projecting, what her balance will be, and um, maybe we can take some more out of that. Um, I would be um, because of our history. I wouldn't want to put that down too low in case uh, this year we had um, an anomaly that we got uh, tuition paid from a school who stopped providing pre-K services. We may not have that next year. So, you know, we want to have a little padding there. So um i will get kids That's in addition to the tuition families mm -hmm. yes the, the the school that closed is paying us but that could be a one-year-old in addition to the families the, the families don't have to pay them right. because they used to get this as a service uh and so now the the, but that could just be but a that, one year only thing. Is that school but, still in business? But wouldn't those families then pay if they want to come? Right. So it's not necessarily the same money. Or they're going to go to kindergarten. Yeah. So it's sort of about the level of number of students right. in the classroom. It, when it's I, and if, it's hard uh, to predict. It's one of the private schools in Deerfield. Uh, they stopped providing uh, a preschool program for their kid, for their employees' kids. So they tuitioned them into our pre-K. But that could be a one-year only thing. Yeah. Unless we get more kids from that. But we don't know that, that they're yeah. going to pay <laughs> no. the school is going to pay. See, when you got well, the school, they pay, pay or, the, or, the, or, or the parents are going to pay. But the parents may But the parents don't have to come here. here. They, they, come here. they may pay when they do come right. here. Right. Because the school's paying, they're coming. <laughs> if the school's not yeah. paying, they have choice and they could go elsewhere. But we would have got the money no matter what, whether the parents paid or the school paid. We would have had the money here anyway. We were, we're not going to have a kid come here free. No, no. But what we're saying is, we were we're guaranteed the money because the parents had to come here for the school to pay. Now, if next year the school says you're on your own, they may they may find, you know, the guy next door, the the woman next door doing daycare. They may not come to our program. The optimistic view is that they're going to love our program so much that they're not going to want to leave. Right? And then they'll go. Or they'll school choice their kids into our kindergarten. I think we need to remember, too, that the last I heard, and I could be wrong, but I thought we had kind of a waiting list. That's what I thought. That we too. were full. We were full in that we had. So we have 18 kids in pre K. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like. 
very which is nice, successful. Which is they really good. Yeah, a couple more. I thought it was like 16. No, yeah, it was 16 drove it up. Yeah, we did get a couple that drove it up to 18. Yeah. 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 But the, the challenge is you don't want, one, we can't spend that money on other things, but we could move more of the preschool expenses there. Correct. So if we so have an IA in preschool, maybe they could pick up the cost yeah. of an IA. Because the more we can get, the more we can get off that school choice money, like the fifty-one thousand, mm -hmm. that's gonna that's gonna help us. So that's a good idea. I mean, to the extent we can afford it, and I guess it all relies on the projection of the enrollment next year. So I will speak with Kim. I'll make that note and, and, that, and see. Do you know, Pete, do. out of the eighteen that are in there, that their first year, like you know, they're three, they're three years old or four years old. And maybe going there next year, possibly. Do you have any idea on that? I wish Chrissy was here to answer that. But there is a chunk of kids who that are moving into kindergarten next year. Okay. Nine of them. Yeah. Oh, there is nine going in there. Yeah. yeah. So, so far, so we have. So the, at nine, least maybe nine going there next year to pre-K. Nine, nine are, are coming out of pre-K. Right. Yeah, but uh, there'll be the other nine are going to stay in the pre. As long as, mm -hmm. as, long as they're going to different stay. kindergarten. Are they close? Oh, no, no, but we're talking about the nine the that left. will be left that, that will still be in preschool. Like you're right, maybe they're going to other kindergartens and other schools. Some could, that's right. right. We don't know. It's, it's kind of when we, will we have I, some I, numbers? I, but I might anticipate that we'll replace those nine. Um, because Based on the interest. You know, I think the interest is high. And, um, and, you know, again, we keep trying to keep ourselves out there. You know, we're trying to make sure that people think about it. Kim and I just talked today about, you know, a few years back, you know, the whole sort of Western region um, reach folks uh, before they got their own place where they meet were coming. Uh, they met here a couple of times, and that's great. I mean, you want to use our cafeteria for your big meeting? Please come. You know, learn about us, talk about us. Um, and now they have their own place. But I just talked to Kim today about how can we get folks back in here? How can we get reach providers back into our building? How can we get early childhood providers to work with us and, and know more about us? You know, in pre-K, it is about marketing. It's kind of an interesting twist. In our kitchen, it's about marketing. It's a small business. You have to market what you have and hope that people buy it. And um, whether you're selling a lunch meal or whether you're selling pre-K. When it comes to the, the other grades, obviously, that marketing piece is there, too. <laughs> And that's where school choice comes in. But in but in pre-K, it's really a business model, right? People pay for the service, and, um, and they want to bring their kids. I've mentioned it to this committee before, but maybe the two new members weren't on the committee last time I brought it up, the newer members. Um, but you know, nationwide studies, uh, when you ask pa parents across the country, you know, what do you look for in a preschool? The, the number one answer, number one and number two, I forget exactly what order they're in, is, it has to be convenient for me to get my kids there. Mm -hmm. And I want a place that's going to care about my kids, that's going to take care of them. Those are the top answers. And that's what we do here. We take care of the kids. We take care of them really well. They are very caring. Okay. Your, your children, I, I, yeah, we they went there. They're not there now. No, they're out of pre-K now, but we loved it. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really Unfortunately, good. when my kids were young, they didn't have, we didn't have a pre-K. didn't have a full day on that. We, did, we didn't. We had this kindergarten, and that was it. Okay, so I mean, I guess one thing is to see if we can push the successful early education program to take a more IA, IA to take an to IA absorb a little more of their costs to take it off of the school budget. Um, and I guess the only, the other thought I have is. If there's anything else that could go down, like we've got these nice decreases in electricity, heat. I mean, I, I, would, I, would, I, I would take, I I would take of, any more from those. I costs. mean, we can look again. Um, Pete and yeah, I can, can we, we can, we that. can take another look see. again uh, and see if there's anything. And um, I, I've tried to, I, I, I've tried to take your suggestions, Katie, and I, even though I'm not showing it here. Uh, because um, it would print out when we're looking at the budget. I'm printing it out on legal pages so we're, we can see the FY60 and actually FY17 actual. And 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 but it's just um, I, 
I love your suggestions. I, I just always struggle with, oh, how am I going to present that? Because the last time I did this, then they said the print was too small and they couldn't <laughs> read it. And um, so we're looking at it. And um, okay. so we can look at that again. And um, one of the in, one of the costs here is um, a buyout of the of the lease, so that we know we won't have that next year. We had uh, leased some computers, and we have a thirty five hundred dollar buyout uh, that Mr. Uh, that Scott Paul gave us. So that's in here. That's in here, but that that's a buyout, so we know we won't have that. Cost that's a one time. Year. That's a one time buyout, so that that won't be in there next year. Mm -hmm. Did you already incorporate that? I did. But that where's that on here? Um, is that in the well, it wasn't. Uh, it's in. It's in the the total net changes to the technology mm -hmm. softwares. Okay. Oh, and that five six, six thousand ninety four because it's it, it, it everything fluctuates every year again. So we have this massive spreadsheet, and then when the percentages change, um, the he did. Scott has been wonderful, and he, he's got this great spreadsheet of all the hardware in each school and all the softwares. And the softwares have to change every year because they're based on, the licenses are based on the number of kids. Mm -hmm. So we have to change the percentages. Um, but also he's asking us to, he's looking at the total investment of the technology in the building. He's asking that we would replace every year one, one like fifteen thousand dollars, which and I think there's one hundred and fifty thousand. So, so that we're not looking for one hundred and fifty thousand when everything falls apart. So that right. we're using fifteen thousand dollars a year to to switch out the, the the technology as it ages. So, I guess one thought there is: should we be putting some of that into the capital budget? And the idea that those technologies are actually equipment that we're buying for the school. And maybe the town could fund that outside of this budget. No, you know, it's a good it's a good thought, Katie. But it's because um, from a from an accounting point uh, standpoint, they don't look at it as capital because the lifespan just too short. is too short. Even though the and that's even though the cost is high, mm -hmm. the lifespan is too short. But that's for accounting purposes, but for funding purposes. The town would be the same way. They, it, you're going to ask us for $150,000 for something that's going to last three years. No, you should put that in your budget and pay mm -hmm. that much over the three years. But like this buyout, could we ask them for the 3500 and then we don't have to increase our operating budget? Well, we're but not increasing. It was already the in there. It was already in there, but we're not doing the lease again. So uh, we had budgeted the $3,500 a year for three years. This is the last year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but he doesn't think he's going to do that again next year. Right, but you're saying we have to go up this year to do that buyout. Um, no, no, no. no. It's already, it's no already. I'm so saying it's going to be a, a decrease minus, next year. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The buyout will have the machines and them alone, though. Them alone. Correct. Right. I mean, the only thing we have that's two big things on increase is the fifty-one thousand for the teacher. Right. And the nine point two on the center. You guys that's, that's have to explain that. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that's different. That's a lot where you can try to take from, Tweak. and really don't want to take. Put that fifty one back in the school choice because who knows what's going to happen next year. Well, right. I was surprised to see. You know, the eighteen thousand dollars on heating and, and, and heating and electricity. That's lucky. That's good. Well, yeah, but if we have just say we have a bad winter with heat, we're going to use up more heat than normal. And I, and the, I, I know and we're going by a three-year average, but I'm, I'm I always look at the worst scenario where. And, but our, we're locked in on our gas price. Yeah, that was just nice. So. That's why I feel comfortable doing it. And also, I, I look at it this way. It, it, Brian asked us to look at that. Mm -hmm. So we so did. We so if we, next time we go out to bid, if this is going up, how are they going to say, no, we're not going to heat your building? <laughs> you, they could say, no, we, we don't think you need more staff. But they're not going to tell us, no, you can't have more heat. <laughs> or do like I do. I wear a sweatshirt at home. <laughs> 
I'm always hot in this building. It's <laughs> oh. quite warm. Uh, hey, I'm in a, sh I'm in a short sleeve shirt. Sure. I'm in the middle They got wool yeah. 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 top and long sleeves. And I, I do think there is a little more balance, too. Our gym is always hot. Our gym is always uh, really hot. And we really need to, I need to ask Bob at CTC, that company, we really figure that out for us. Because the gym, the gym is over too. 70, and some of the other rooms are at 67, you know. So something's not quite right. I'll go home and put my sweatshirt on when I wore in the house. It's 62. I mean, it's comfortable. I mean. But, you know, I can see a parent, look how my kids are always cold. Well, we're, we're trying to keep a low budget. So the other thing with school choice is that we could get more school choice students in, potentially, but that would only help the, the following year. But, yes, and you, and you, but you also want to look, I don't know uh, how, how Mr. Christopher Floyd feels, but I mean, hmm. you, you look at your, you want to look at your class right. sizes, you don't want to. three is the one that has, yeah, 14. 14, I mean, we, always, we shoot for 20 usually. Right. In yeah. the discretion of the principal right. at 20, plus or minus depends on what the class is, right? Yes, but I would also back the bus up a little bit further and remind you that the 18 to 20 target is set by school committee. Yeah. So if you're happy with that, we'll stick with that. If you think that it should be 20 to 22, then we'll talk about that. But I'm, I like the 18 to 20. And, um, and also, um, we also every year need to replace uh, the school choice kids that graduate. And that can be a big number or a small number. It's what? One, small number. Three, no. four, it's six. It's three, four, five, it's seven this year that are going out. But we also have a bigger, bigger preschool class, and in the next year or two, we hope a lot of them stay with us because preschool. I mean, we don't we don't count those kids who don't live lately as school choice because it's right. you know, self pay. Um, but there are kids in our preschool that come from other towns, so we'd love to keep them here. So I think um, what I'm hearing is that you um, my my direction would be try to balance the the request to the town to be 2.5 or lower by taking maybe an IA, putting the teacher back on the school choice and maybe taking an IA off uh, the school choice at this point and, um, and and get our request to the town to be about 2.5 if not a little bit lower. I think we should try and get the town request to 2.5. But is that gonna dig a hole with the a bigger hole with the school, school choice part. funds. No, it's, it's going to dig a, little, a small. Well, you, no, you're right. Yes, it will be. It will dig just a bigger hole in the school choice, which eventually we're going to have to address that. Exactly, because you're. It's not going to keep going. Back in the earlier days of school choice, I remember us buying our first. 20 computers and a tower that we were being moved from classroom to just from school choice. We were able to use to buy materials and not pay for salaries. And that's what school choice paid for back then was for materials for our kids, not for salaries. And that's what the problem is now. We're paying tons of salaries and buying a snowblower. Are there more staff than there were at that time? Maybe more services, maybe. maybe a little more. I'm talking. Yeah. I'm back. I'm probably talking back when Lauren was, you know, you know I might say 20, no, 18 years ago. Well, I can't go back that far. Right. I'm, but, <laughs> well, but correct me if I'm wrong, though. But we, with the exception of the ESL teacher, we, we haven't had staff increases here. But did we all? No, I'm just talking about how we pay, how we pay for it. Oh, I, heard, I thought I heard Katie ask if we have more staff. Yeah. Not in the no. nine years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. But we but we switched a lot of the salaries over to school choice. Right. Over the last, I would say, I'm going to say at least 18 right. years. And, and those salary, those contractual increases drive the budget. Yeah. That's the biggest part yeah. of, of the change. But like I said, we used to We're buy the materials staff. with that school choice money. Mm -hmm. You know, twenty. I think it was like 20 or 20... It was fifty thousand dollars. I remember that year we spent fifty thousand on computers for our kids, and then all it was was a moving thing that had the brain, and we were able to go to a classroom, and all twenty kids could use that computer. And how much out of school choice we we buying materials out of now, out of all that school choice? Not much. 
a snowblower this year. I, you know, not to pick on the snowblower, but we had to get <laughs> it. it. We needed it, exactly, we needed it for our kids. I'm, I'm just a little bit hesitant to just push it down to I know. two and a half percent. If there's any decisions we should be making sooner next that year. don't or opportunities to, I don't know where they would be. So. Well, as Patty said, I think that Patty and I need to meet and, and really scrub through the budget and see what else we can do. Mm -hmm. I know at Frontier we have a budget subcommittee, one from each town, right, and Patty and Lynn, Dr. Carey, mm -hmm. um, work on that. I know they're meeting tomorrow night before our first look at it and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, you know, maybe one of us needs to be an ear when, not so much maybe this year, but maybe mm -hmm. in future years, one of us in the committee try to listen in, you know, they run the school, you know, but right. you know, we're the ears sometimes that we could help. Well, I think out. we have to see what the finance committee says too in terms of how much yeah. the town is willing to support because that's they're the ones that have to pick up the increases going forward. And so we can only squeeze so much out of here. Mm -hmm. But the other the other way to look at it is to make the case for the increase and to try and get the funds from the right. town, which if they can find them. You know, if they know that we're paying or use the school choice money ahead, not last year, but a year and a half ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, and we're utilizing it as best we can. Well, yeah, to they pay need for to know it. that, I think. I mean, I think they need to. Because they're always saying, what are you spending? We used to have, we used to have, we used to save, I, I'm trying to remember a number, we're trying to use to save $20,000 for a rainy day. If we had a problem, we had $20,000 that we could spend. But Bob, we, we, you're but talking we, about you're talking about 18 years ago. There, I, were, there were more Waitley kids. There were more students then. So there I, I read it out the enrollment then. from the off the education oh, yeah. website. So for my report, I was going to share that with you guys. But I think it's good to look at that, and maybe we can keep that in our, um, add that to the narrative because it really is interesting to see the trends. It goes back to '96. So this is just off the website. And they show, um, there's two different charts. One is showing you school choice as a percent. This, this is as a, you know, the total enrollment and the pattern there. And you can see kind of a decline in an overall enrollment. And you can also see that school choice is going down. Now it looks like residents are going up last year, so that's good, or this year. There's a slight increase in mm -hmm. residents. And you know, these are small numbers, so it's hard to look at too many trends, but. So residences and the lighter and the school choice. Residences is the lighter number, and yeah, the school choice is the darker. But even 96, 97, we were only at 120 something people. Right. So if we're talking back. But that was 20 years ago, costs of everything have gone up. Yeah, but I'm just saying, we're, somebody was just saying we had more kids back then. Well, we didn't really have more kids in 20 years ago in 97. Maybe we had more residents, right? You had, had more, more residents, residents, so we had more people that were more closely right. tied to the. Town. And now what we're saying is, if we if we only looked at our residents and didn't take in any school choice, how many kids would be in each classroom? Mm -hmm. It would be very small, very very small. Mm -hmm. And and what you can't do, um, what, what it's more difficult to do is here is that we've only got one section of each grade. So if you were going to reduce staff, now you're going to combine grades, you know, and, and, and that's not a very popular idea. Um, right, like that we have a certain fixed cost in the sense that correct, the goal would be to have one teacher per class. I don't think we, anybody wants to change that. Um, so it has to do with the support around that, I think. Think about that, Just if we're going to start looking. Did you give out two oh, different you know reports? I did. I think you guys got my two originals. Yeah. So the front one is the total enrollment and the school choice. The back one oh. is the dark line is the students coming into Waitley, and the light line is the students that are leaving our district. So we do have a handful of students that are leaving the district mm -hmm. also. And, and the town has to pay for that. And the town has to pay for that. So that's money that we could potentially recapture if we could get them to come back to school here. So it's just helpful, I think, and these are the kinds of things that 
Is this in the just in the elementary or is this high school too? This is just Waitley, so that's just elementary. Okay. So you'd have to look up the frontier one to see. But the other thing is the school choice is sort of trailing off. So again, too, like how do we what does that tell us? I'm not quite sure, but it's good to be aware. Right. And as we're becoming more reliant on these funds, it's gonna be really important to keep that in mind. So um, Okay, so we're going to, do you think you have enough to work with based on what we talked about in terms of mm -hmm. going through again and seeing what else you might reduce, right. looking at the early childhood? Right. And what, and, I, and what my goal will be is that you guys get to see it before the night of the meeting. Yes, that would be helpful. And to the extent you could explain the, the increases, the, um, the central office ones again. Sure, it's, it, 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 it's the You're percentage. Sure. I know the percentage is what that's it's, based it's the addition on. of the food service director. The food service director, that was a little bit, yeah. And, and then the, the number of students. Right. The five, is it a so That's the percentage. That's why it's going from nine to ten. Right. But that's the percentage. Uh, and then we also would, would have in the, um, nothing else was added except for a potential non-union increase. Which is in there? Wasn't the wasn't there a food service director though before? There was, but she was only shared by three schools, and okay. now we hired one that's going to be shared by five schools. Okay, so that should make it lower for us. Well, <laughs> right? it wouldn't if you didn't go up to ten percent. So her salary is higher because of the so the job is bigger. You have more. You're feeding more students. And what about, we also use school choice for the food deficit. So we're hoping that there won't be so one. we're planning for no deficit, which well, maybe it's going to be. Yeah. Tough, but that's not going to happen in the first year. Is that too early it, to it, tell it, you? It's never, and let me just say this, it's never going to happen here. We're always going to run into right. deficit because from a, a perspective, we really should only have one food service person, but you can't run a cafeteria with one person. So we have to have two. So we're never going to make money. What do you call it? An economy of size or something? Economy of scale. Economy of scale. We're so small. Right. But are, really hard to are payments out. happening? Well, I love the new uh, reports that they send out to tell you how much money you owe. Have you been getting this? Can well, you pay by credit card yet? Not yet. I, think it's I don't want to do that. But so I could Why, probably not? Owe. <laughs> Why not? They have to pay money on my credit card if I use it. Yeah. Money. Money. We, yeah. We, unless and we, and we're I'm still gonna, working on. I have to sit with Scott Paul. He's involved with this, and it's and it's very we difficult just do the because. Bank account well, it, there's, but it's because, again, I'm dealing with four different towns, so I can very easily do this for Frontier, mm -hmm. but it's much more difficult to do it for the four towns mm -hmm. because it's four different bank accounts. And it's four different treasurers that I have to get by in. Uh, so I've got to talk with Scott about the technology, <laughs> and Dr. Perry and I have to talk to the town administrators about how um, how Put them all in one receptive room. the town treasurers would be. Put them all in one room. And then if we go through all this and the parents don't want to use it because they don't want to pay the fee, then what? Just make sure they're not getting a bill at the end of the year. But I mean, I guess does that mean we should be planning for some deficit that we're going to and need I'm to hoping cover? We'll, and somewhere? I'm hoping that we'll have it saved somewhere in the budget. So you're thinking the operating budget might be yeah. cover that this year? Yeah. Okay. okay. So we'll look forward to your magic work that you're going to do to make this look like a two percent, mm -hmm. two and a half or less. I really wish it were magic. I know it's hard. And it's I, very, I could very like hard. twinkle my nose, like you know, <laughs> Samantha. There's no itched, and it would be done. I'm trying to be or jagged. <laughs> 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 Me too. And then maybe we can get some more people to come. <laughs> can we get There's a little capacity to fill up? Can we get a list of all employees and where they're point five and point two and all that? I know it's a little difficult, but what, what do you want? A list of all employees for Wakey Elementary School. 
we can do that, but we're not going to do that with salaries. We're going to nope. we no. do it with FTEs. Yeah, just yeah. Their, their point. Yep, who's who. Yeah, yeah. just who. You know, I don't, you know. You, you want their name, their position, and yep. what? What they're yeah. one, like, he's one. Yes. He's one. He's not right. 0. 0.75 or anything right. like that. I just, want, I just want to see it. Yep. If we can. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't reflect um, the increase in the health insurance. No, so that the town change. increase. Well, it's it, right. it, that's what part of the other part. Thank you for saying that. That's raising the um, central office costs is um, is what health we're projecting. Your health insurance. Uh, your based on the new contract. Right. This comes close to what Bob's asking for, right? There's Except only it doesn't of, have any names on it. There's only a couple of them where there's more than one person in that category. Right. Only a couple. Otherwise, they're all individuals. Bob, just on that. I'm just saying, like, your administration, your administration assistant, the 1.80, is that? That's two people. That's, two people, right? There's only, a, people, people, there's right? only a few right. on here that are two. That's one of them. The custodians is one of them. What is a one for, just out of curiosity? Is it a 35 hour a week employee? Or what is the, is it based so 35? We based it on a 35 hour For 52 week. weeks? Or yes. Well, well the, not the teachers. So, so you got to remember, right. the, well, the IAs are on 192 day contract and the mm -hmm. teachers are on 182 day contract. Okay. But what are the rest of the staff? Uh, it depends. So what, like when you look at the, the uh, Pete's office, Lola works 210 days, so she's a 0.8, and Mary works all year, so she's she works 260 days, just as Pete works 260 days, so they're 1.0s. The teachers are considered 1.0 even though their contracts are Correct. 182 days equals a 1.0. Which I always think that when, we, I, because Dr. Carey, Pete, myself, the administration is we have to work 260 days a year to get one year of credit with MTRS, and they only have to work 182 days to get one year of credit in the MTRS. And I always think we should get more because we more work credit. more days. Yeah. Well, that's a good argument. <laughs> okay. Um, great. Well, thank you. That was that's a lot of work. We'll look forward to the narrative of what this is all making happen. Too. It's going to look a lot helpful. different. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Let's talk about the end of the report. Superintendent's report. Superintendent's report. Well, principals, we did the report. Mm -hmm. I handed out what I had to spring enrollment. Yeah. And the superintendent's report is really um, part of what we're doing as an administrative team with our narrative. I just wanted you, and I'm not going to take time to read through it, but you can read through it. Part of the, um, and I think you've seen this, um, Pete, part of the strategic plan, which we spoke to when we went through the mission versus vision, which is complicated, but the strategic plan that we have includes a curriculum assessment and special ed task force. So I wanted you to be aware, this came out by um, our uh, collaborative and our director of special ed, and they put this together to help school committees understand really what, what the task force is about. Well, we can talk about it at a future time, um, but it, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. They did make their vision, which you can see up there, one and two, they have a vision for what they're doing. And I, I, I wanted to be, we had a question uh, last month, which was only a couple of weeks ago at the Frontier Regional School Committee, and I wanted to uh, elaborate on it. And that's why this month I'm explaining to all of the uh, school committees, because it is part of our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And we've never had Karen come and talk to this committee yet. As, as long as I've been here. No, so that and, might and be she will. And something at some point. One of the pieces understand. of the narrative that Pete's doing is going to include. Um, there's this piece, mm -hmm. but there's also a special ed uh, piece that will go with the narrative of what makes Waitley Waitley. Mm -hmm. 
and early childhood and the curriculum that we're doing and all this good stuff. You know, all those good things that people are interested in. Um, like you said, you know, that... Trying to peel back the layers a little bit. Yeah. What makes way we, you know, what is it that we're doing? The value impact. What's that? What's that? What's the value for the money? And that's really what we're striving to do. So that's self-explanatory, but ask any questions. Uh, I'd love to answer them. It's, it's a really exciting um, group. When you see RTI, MTSS, RTI is response to intervention, and MTSS is multi-tiered um, multi support systems. And really what that means is uh, personalizing the, the uh, kind of remedial or the kind of intervention based on a child's needs. Mm -hmm. So it's a multi-tiered system of support. Some kids need more than others, some kids need a little bit and then they don't need anything, they just need a little help. Others, you know, you have to support them all with And doing that early and effectively is important. We, we have, it's not in that particular one, but in the other narrative that Karen turned, you know, drafted, that you'll see in the overall weekly narrative, we have about 13% of our students in special education versus the state average, which is about 17%. And um, and I think that part of part of the reason that we've maintained a lower number is because we do really try to intervene early and quickly and efficiently with kids before they end up in special education. Okay. That's good. And that's what the vision is, you know, one full system of support, not you know breaking it down by titles okay do we is this um updating a strategic plan that's already in place or is this, is this their first the strategic plan in, is is about the task force and the work that they're doing as it evolves so that's what the strate strategic plan include you know it, that's the piece for special ed this work that they're doing and this will take all year to but to is this new have they done a plan before? Or no. Was it, was no. Was yeah, that was in the plan. It was also originally in my goals uh, in October, but it wasn't fleshed out enough. It, none of the goals were. Mm -hmm. So it, I just kind of took it off. But, but it is a very important piece of what we're doing and a very important initiative mm -hmm. for the district. Okay. Motion to Make adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Unless anyone has a nice second. All in favor?